The man who robbed me did not announce himself as robber. Instead, he knocked on my door and kindly asked to be let in. Knew the name of the landlord, said he was there to fix the roof. Instead, he came into my life for relief. We've been expecting you, I said, as I opened the door and let my robber in. He needed to get an adapter, he said, for one of his tools, he said, and he circled the rooms looking for one. It bothered me, but not enough to ask him to stop. He needed one more tool, he said. He'd just get it from his car, he said. He'll just pop out and get it, he said, and he left through the front door. As he closed the door behind him, he left me with final words. Don't want to be letting any robbers in, now do we? As the door clicked into place, I felt a sigh of relief. By the time I realised how much had been stolen, he was far gone. The moral of the story is, the most dangerous people always claim they want to protect you from dangerous people. The man who raped me did not announce himself rapist. Instead, he came into my life quoting feminism, fundraising for rape crisis centres, asking to walk me home at night. To keep me safe, he said. From people who wanted to harm me, he said. There were people who wanted to harm me, he said, but not him. Years down the line, when rape had become part of my daily life, still living alongside this man of excuses, he still said this. He wanted to protect me from people who wanted to harm me, but he used different words now. Used different excuses. I love you, and I would never harm you, he said. He used this as a mantra. Every day, as if his words could undo his deeds, remake the world in his image, erase the harm he'd done to me. The night before, and the night before, and the night before. The moral of the story is, the people who say they are strong enough to protect you also know they are strong enough to harm you. The moral of the story is the most dangerous people always say they want to protect you from someone else. The politicians that will oppress us will not announce themselves as oppressors. Instead, they will name themselves our protectors, our saviors. Instead, they will promise to make us great again. Instead, they will point to distant threats and promise to protect us with walls and deportations to keep us safe from swarms and invasions. Instead, they will mutter words like, terror, as if they belonged to someone else, as if they could remake the world in their image, as if wars fought for oil were not terror, as if children killed by drones were not terror, as if racism and Islamophobia were not violence, as if austerity and cuts did not leave real people bleeding. Oppressors have never come into power announcing themselves as oppressors. They come into power claiming to be champions of the people, claiming to speak for the common man. They come into power promising to protect you from dangerous people. They come into power promising they will make you great again, pure again, true again. You are smart enough to know better than that, to see through their rhetoric, to not repeat the same mistake repeated throughout human history. The moral of the story is, the people who say they want to protect you from dangerous people are the most dangerous people. The moral of the story is, in order to convince you that they can save you, they need to first convince you that you need saving. So I will say it once, in the hope to never have to repeat it again, we do not need saving.